with touch, it it's it tends to slow down. You suck. Sorry, but it's true. <laughs> Simon Lazad has been tearing courses up and setting distance records for the last decade, and in doing so, he's grown a huge following and is always a crowd favorite. But recently, he's been battling some injuries and has not hit his full potential throughout the last few seasons. He wound up taking some time off during the end of 2020 to figure out what was going on, and in 2021, he returned to the tour after almost seven months. We are now here with one of the most anticipated returns to the touring field here, Simon Lazad making his a tour restart this year. So what was the hardest part of this whole thing for you? Uh, last season, I took like a five week break off the of throwing and just thought, after this break I can throw again because break always helps, we know that. But uh, I came back to the course and it was way worse. I couldn't even throw backhands anymore. I was just like, what is going on? I mean, that was now in November, so I wasn't too worried yet because I still had three months to go. I went from doctor to doctor, did all the x-rays, and they found out that nothing was wrong with my elbow. Like, they couldn't see anything wrong with it and barely any inflammation. So that's always like a crappy moment when you have something that hurts and you don't know why or what it is. Um, rehab started, went like 20 weeks or something, and then and I didn't feel any better. I was like, I feel like almost worse now. Yeah. And I just didn't understand what was wrong so then we wrapped it all back to the start and started a new program different approach we now call it a triceps tendinopathy triceps tendinopathy basically just an overuse injury and we started strengthening my triceps a lot to take like the pressure and the force off of my joint and my tendons and uh, then i finally started feeling improvements and now I st i'm still not throwing 100 percent, but i'm close enough that my distance is still like around 500 feet which is good enough i think after returning last year, he wasn't able to come away with any wins on the season, but still managed to finish decent in points at 35th place, especially for someone coming off of an injury. But now, Simon has had time to recover, and this year, he's making up for his lost time. He's showing out in front of fans, hitting crazy putts, and possibly playing the best and most consistent in his tour career. I mean, this guy has missed half the tournaments for the year, and he is still above hundreds of other professional players, sitting in 8th place for points. Back in April, the windiest event in history, Simon showed as he still had what it takes to beat these top guys hitting crazy putts and placing second in some of the worst conditions ever played in. Obviously these wins are really making second guess going for putts and Simon floats it up there as well but his connects with the chains. This is a very long bit and again in these windy conditions these putts we got even more tricky. But Simon will stick it in there a Y gap here for Simon to go through. Gives it a look and puts it in. I thought he was gonna be out of position, but Simon had different plans. What a beautiful putt from Lazat. See what Simon can do here. And he will find it. And even with the bogey, Simon Lazat secures the solo second with a birdie on the final hole. Congrats to him on Another big finish on tour this year. After coming off a great performance, Simon was looking like he was really starting to heat up with two back-to-back -back top 10 finishes. And with all this momentum, he came into the OTB Open and won his first national tour event since 2018. Crazy. I've heard so many times that, I mean, golf's a mental game, of course, and my, my decisions on the course weren't always the best because I was like the show-off kid, and I kind of still am and still want to be but uh, my body says no, so gotta tune it down a bit. I was so happy with my drives today. It was, I don't know, it just felt like easy. <laughs> and the things were working out and the other guys were making mistakes when I wasn't. And man, that was a job well done, finally. After his first big win in three years, Simon has all the confidence in the world. And this brings us to his most recent event, the Portland Open. And from the very beginning, Simon was on top and stayed there the entire time. Garrett close. That putt would feel pretty, uh, pretty difficult for the average player. Uh, hitting the mandatory trees. The new rules make it a little bit it's weird, to be I, honest, I'm with the not, plane. But he didn't cross the plane. Yep, I agree. He and will. I think he'll be very happy to have hit that tree. Well, you know who did cross the plane? Uh, Simon. Unfortunately, coming up pretty short. Ooh. 
just over the rim. Two shot lead and six birdies in a row now for Simon Mazzot. That caught very similarly to a putt that Joel made earlier in the round. And Simon, that's about as high as you can possibly make a putt. Farther back, maybe 35, and he does build on that turkey streak. Simon going for the flex line. This is looking really good. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. <laughs> Simon to win it. Wow. I'm out of breath. I, I was so nervous the whole round. I don't know with my game right now, it just it's all just working. The bad shots are getting lucky and the good shots are getting good results. My heart's like going 180 right now. I can't even think. Portland, I love you. Now Simon has two Elite Series wins in a row for this year, and we're only halfway through the season. If he can bring everything together and win his third tournament in a row, it would be truly amazing. I asked you guys if you thought he could do it, and of course almost everyone is rooting for him. And if he continues to play at this level, he's on pace to break his previous season earnings record by more than double. Only halfway through 2022, and he's already earned over 26 grand. And in his best year back in 2017, he made it out of the season earning $28,000. So everything is clicking for him right now. And with two big wins down, I can only imagine how bad he's wanting a major this year. Lazad is a living legend of the game, and he is still yet to capture a major event win, so there's no better time than now. And right now, fortunately for him, he might be playing the best he's ever played in his career. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more disc golf content. With that win at OTB a couple of weeks ago, uh, do you feel like that was a sign that you've recovered from various injuries and things to a certain point and you're there and maintenance is now the key or are you still pressing uh, to get more out of your body and to get back to uh, say 100% if you're not there yet? Well, I'm definitely not over my injury. It, it's pretty much just as bad as it was the last dozen months. My injury will never be better unless I try something like stem cell therapy or some kind of surgery or stuff, but it's just an injury that just, it won't get better over time. Like my therapist told me that it'll never be good again, <laughs> unless we try uh, some different kind of stuff. So what is getting better is my brain. <laughs> like mentally, <laughs> I'm just more relaxed, more calm, feel more of a routine out there and having more control. And with an injury like this, where it's all about controlling my body, my emotions, not overdoing things, not getting like overly excited or too much adrenaline going for the rounds. It makes it so much easier to get through long courses like this because I'm just way more calm and like more focused because it takes a lot of practice and routine to play a four hour round and stay focused the whole time. <laughs>